All right, everybody, we're going to finish our mission to Venus. Here's our very last chapter. Thanks for sticking in and being curious and um, following along with us. So, here we go. You wrenched your thoughts back to reality, which was bad enough in itself. Well, we're all free, but what do we do now? We surrender, the doctor said. Perry was startled. What? To those demons and dead men? There's nothing else for it, Bergen said soberly. It's the last thing I want to do, but believe me, the foam will soon dissipate, and before you know it, this hold will be solid with Legion. Absolutely right, the doctor agreed. None of you wanted to do it, but what you lacked was an alternative, so you made your way back to the control room where the imps awaited you. Behind you, the Legion was already beginning to stir, and in the control room was still creeping its way inwards. All you received was dour looks from the dead men and glee from the imps who immediately started plaguing you. It was within you to clout one of them, but you knew that the attempt would be useless. You'd be brought down by a gun should you so much as lift a finger. The crew knew it too, all giving you but the briefest of glances, then returning to their chores. Venus calling, came the, from the speaker. We can't last much longer now. We've scrapped the bottom of, scraped the bottom of the barrel. You are only hope. The Aeron commander switched on his microphone. All set now, Venus. We'll be with you in no time. Just hold out. Thank you, commander. We'll do our best. He turned from the console and towards Tedder. Indicating the doctor and Bergen, he said, Tie those two up. This was done. Now put them over there, he said, and they were hauled to the doorway where the leechin would reach them in no time. But it was not done so quickly that the doctor did not have a chance to see the ship's position and course. As Tedder placed him where he had been told, he whispered, Steer eight degrees to port. The lieutenant looked at him in some puzzlement, but Bergen understood. Do it, mister, he said. Lock the controls while you're at it. The imps clustered about the two and cooed their delight as the leechin reached their legs and wrapped about them. Both men were white of face as their fate became apparent. Soon the growth would reach their hands and finally their faces. They knew what awful thing would happen then as their life was drawn from them. But you saw Tedder alter course while everyone's attention was elsewhere. You did not know what he was doing, but guessed that it was the doctor's doing, up to no good again. All you could do was wait. It was bad enough that you were in the power of the imps, but the thought of the Venus colony also being ruled by them was intolerable. You saw the doctor and Bergen shuddering as the leechin crawled toward its feast, but as yet there was nothing you could do. Then, suddenly, there was a planet directly ahead of the ship and coming closer by the second. Pandemonium broke out and everyone raced for Tedder. There was nothing they could do. He snatched up an iron bar and smashed it down on the steering controls. Immediately, he was hit by bolts from the imp's guns and fell writhing to the deck. The Aeron commander leapt forward and wrenched at the helm to no avail. It's locked on, he shouted. We can't change course. He turned to one of the dead men. Get down to that steering, emergency steering, he commanded. Bring the ship about. He'll never get through the leechin, Tatter said, through teeth gritted against the pain. You've lost this one. The Aeron commander gave him a murderous look, yet the infliction of further pain upon the lieutenant would serve no purpose. You all stared in horror at the screens as the planet hurtled in towards you. The doctor's reasoning was clear to you. Better that you all should die than the people of Venus be enslaved. Perry stood near to you, as brave as ever she was, and saying nothing. But you could feel her shuddering with the same fear as possessed you. Death was near. The imps grouped themselves against the bulkhead, concerned now with their own safety and no longer interested in the situation of the doctor and Burrigan. They cooed among themselves, then suddenly were gone. The rats had abandoned the sinking ship. Briefly, you saw the dead men lift their heads as though returning from a nightmare. Then you hit. Except that you didn't. There was a moment of total silence as you all flinched from the inevitable. Then you were out and floating free, the screens showing nothing but the distant stars. 
Disbelief filled the air. Then the doctor grinned at Burr again. We were right, weren't we? You were, doctor. I only followed along. Oh, don't belittle yourself, commander. He looked towards you. Are you going to set us free or just sit and enjoy the show? Several of you freed them and cut the leech in a way. What happened to the planet? Where did it go? There wasn't one, the doctor said. We're in a space warp zone. You were still puzzled until Bergen added, Refraction. That planet is actually light years away. What you are seeing was its image. He crossed to Tedder and helped him to his feet. Are you all right, mister? Yes, thank you, sir, but still gu guilty of mutiny. Not so. You made what you thought was the best decision. Now we'll forget it. Let's just get on to Venus. Perry looked round from tending to the dead men, who had no idea of what it had been happening. They had not been dead, only possessed. What about the leechin? Look, it's everywhere. Indeed it was, crawling its menacing way in all directions. The ship would never make it to Venus. The growth would fill it long before arrival. I think I can answer that, the doctor said. He turned to Bergen. Can you empty this ship of oxygen, Commander? I can, but what do we breathe? You all don spacesuits and live inside those. Deprived of oxygen, the leechin are as good as dead, so you can use the emergency steering and still reach Venus in time. Then you revive the leechin, and all is well. Clear? Of course, the Aaron commander said, also returned to normality. And when our breathing tanks need replenishing, we can do it from my ship. So it was agreed. The commanders and the crew were full of thanks to the three of you, but the doctor was impatient to be on his way. There was so much learning to be done, so much more to experience. Led by a group of men lashing a path clear with fire extinguishers, you made your way back to the TARDIS. Once inside, you said to the doctor, That was close. Very, Perry added. The doctor operated the controls, and once again you set off. You knew not where. You're both too nervous, he said. You really must learn to put all these things down to experience. And that, my friends, is Doctor Who, Mission to Mars. Sorry, I always want to say Mars. Mission to Venus by William Ems. And if this is your first introduction to the Doctor and you like adventure, space and time stories, sometimes even history stories, I would encourage you to check it out. There's going to be a lot you can find online about Doctor Who. And there are tons of episodes and books and um, the library I know has Doctor Who. So even the classic series and the new one. So make sure you look into Doctor Who on our more catalog as well and see what the library has for you. Thanks for joining us for this experiment of choosing your own adventure and I hope you um, enjoyed the end of the story and we look forward to um, spending this summer trying lots of new things with you here at Owlsworth Public Library. So enjoy and we'll see you again soon. Bye.